sod buster. This is your last warning. Get out by sunup or be buried here. That's all of it, Duke. All right. Now make tracks out of here. But we got no place to go. This is our home. We've worked hard. Dry up and get going. Mark my words, there'll be a day of reckoning. Reverend Hardy. Howdy there, Bible Toter. You and your sister arrived just in time to give me your farewell blessing. Well, they're not leaving. Then they'll be planted here. You've no right to go around driving decent people out of their homes and taking the law into your own hands. I may not have the right, but I've done pretty good so far, lady. As for you, preacher, I've warned you before. That sky pilot get-up isn't always going to save you. I have a good mind to give you a beating. Don't let my sky pilot get-up, as you call it, stop you. You crowded your luck too far that time. You and your high-talking sister are going with them. All of you, get in that wagon. There you are. You'll have to fight me or shoot me in cold blood. Stop or I'll let you have it. Get your hands away from your guns. Parson, would you mind taking up the collection? With pleasure. You're making a mistake mixing in here, whoever you are. The name's Durango Kid. And from now on, I'm mixing in plenty. Now you make tracks. I'll be seeing you again. You said something there, mister. <laughs> We're mighty grateful to you. That's all right. I was glad I could help. Parson, just what's going on around here? It's the old story of greed and power. We're up against a band that's set on driving every homesteader out. Any idea who's back of it? Of course, Blaze Howard. But we can't prove a thing. Can't your marshal do something? We haven't any marshal. They don't last very long around here. Lead poison, eh? That's right. In the front or back? Back most of the time. But they're not always fussy. Well, it looks like a case of sink or swim. You'll either have to organize and fight your own battle or go under. That's what I've been trying to tell the homesteaders. Any luck? Not much. You see, I only recently arrived here, and those killers had them pretty badly scared already. We've tried, but they always beat us. There's no use. We haven't a chance. I think you have, ma'am. Parson, suppose you talk to the homesteaders. Tell them the only way they'll have peace around here is to pull together. Can we count on your help? Yes, but I always work alone. Why do you wear a mask? That's something I've never answered, ma'am. Adios. Wait. I'll be around. Well, that's him. If we only had our guns. Let's trail him and see where he holds up. I'm 
bit small. I'll just take my home in San Antonio. Looking for a masked hombre on a white horse. Did you see him? Masked rider? Yeah, seems like I did. Which way do you go? Wait a minute, Steve. That is a black horse. No, it wasn't. It's a sorrel. Oh, you're both wrong. It was a pinto. Suppose you fellers make up your minds. Was his horse hard of hearing? What's that got to do with it? Nothing. You're crazy, all of you. Well, don't get mad. We're just trying to help you. Did you or didn't you see him? I guess we didn't. <laughs> well, Steve, I'm afraid we riled them a bit. Bob, they're going to be riled more than that before I get through with them. Air Raider! Bend him down, will you, Chuck? Keep him out of sight. Take care of the Murphys? Blaze, we run into a little trouble. What kind of trouble? The Durango kid. So you let a cheap tin horn with a mask carry you out of your wits, eh? Boss, this Durango kid ain't no ordinary Jasper. He's greased lightning. Hey, what's the big idea? Well, I gotta clean up, ain't it, boss? Get out of here before I start cleaning up. Sure. Say, didn't I hear y'all say something about the Durango kid? What's that? Why, well, I wasn't listening. I just... Do you know anything about the Durango kid? Boy, oh boy. Do I know anything about the Durango kid? Why, the undertakers go plumb crazy when he hits town. Well, I heard tell he got whole boot hills named after him. You hear that, boss? And that ain't all. Well, that's enough. Get out. That's... Get out of here, you! <laughs> I've got an empire right here in my hands. And no Durango kid or anyone else is going to stand in my way. Now, if you can't handle things, I'll get men who can. Don't you worry, boss. We'll nail this hide to a fence. Well, do it with guns and not gab. Now, get after him. You, squirt. I ought to kill you. Be just a minute, Vicky. I'm going to put a notice in the paper about the homesteaders meeting.
And remember, boys, we're supposed to be out on a spree, so put on a good show. Sure, we'll just imagine we're a bunch of poor cow folks who haven't had a good time in a month of Sundays. Well, just don't let your imagination run away with you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But you also started it. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, a great big grown-up man acting just like a child. I know, ma'am. And every word you say is true. But it really isn't my fault. Not your fault. No, ma'am. I reckon it was the way I was brung up. <laughs> You're impossible. Everything's under control. I'm Tex Harding. This is my sister, Vicky. Now, yeah, we've met. I'm very grateful to you. Well, I hardly deserve your thanks, Reverend, seeing how I started all this. My name's Steve Ransom. Boys and I are just visiting. That's all Dusty Gulch needs, more roughnecks. Well, we're really sorry about this. <laughs> I'll bet you are. <laughs> Don't mind her. <laughs> There's them lunatics we run into out in the woods. Watch your step, stranger. Don't forget what I told you. Better watch yours, too. Thank you, I will. Stranger around here? That's right, just dropped in for a little fun. You picked the right spot. Place is wide open and the sky's the limit. Sounds like you've got an easygoing marshal. We don't have a marshal. I run things around here. I take it you don't cotton the lawman. I don't. Putting on a badge in Dusty Gulch is like signing your own death warrant. Blaze Howard, you murderer! What are you talking about, Sonny? You know very well. You killed my father. You're wrong, Marty. Your dad and I were the best of friends. That's a lie. You sent your men out to our place to get him. You got my dad in the back. And that's the way you're gonna get it. Even if you're right, you're a little young to be taking the law in your own hands, aren't you? Well, this gun ain't. Now turn around. Turn around, I said. Let me go. Let me go. Let him go, Duke. Might be a good idea to teach him some manners first. That is necessary. Who said so? Like you're gonna have a new patient soon, Doc. Yeah. Doug, what a marshal he'd make. I was just thinking the same thing. Mr. Ransom, I'd like you to meet Jeb Stevens, Dr. Weston. Glad to know you. Glad to know you, gentlemen. 
That was as slick a polishing job as I've seen in many a day. Yes, sir. -y. Slick as a whistle. Mr. Ransom, may I ask you what your plans for the future are? Well, they're a little indefinite right now. Would you consider being our next marshal? You're just the man for the job. Be a great service to the community. We need you, Mr. Ransom. No, thanks. That's not in my line. Oh, I suppose horses are much easier to scare than outlaws. And safer. No argument about that, ma'am. I'm holding a meeting of the homesteaders Thursday afternoon in my place. You're welcome to come. Now, thanks, Reverend, but I don't care much about meetings. Well, good day, all. Gee, gee, mister, I, I don't know how to thank you for what you've done for me. That's all right, Marty. You just take it easy. Something will be done, all right. And I'll see you again. Be right with you, boys. I want to give this back. You got it. Better be careful how you play with it. Next time you won't be so lucky. Hey, stranger. I heard you turned down the marshal's job. That's so? How about changing your mind? I thought you didn't like lawmen. I don't. But the Drango Kid's on the prowl around here. Drango Kid? He's an outlaw, and I want him out of the way. Might be a man-sized job. I'm willing to pay for it. I'll put up $2,000 for his hide. $2,000 for his hide? Makes it kind of interesting. Take any one of these badges. Ex-marshals? Yeah. They wouldn't take orders. From you? I'm waiting for your answer. Mind if I take the whole outfit? No. Go right ahead. What's your handle? Call me Marshal. Your office will take a little cleaning up. How about using your swamper? Cannonball. Yes, sir. Go along and help the Marshal. Sure, boss. Well, what are you doing with that? Blaze Howard just hired me to hunt down the Durango kid. Let's go down to my office, boys. Blaze, I don't get you making that feller marshal. You will when he and the Drango Kid meet and blow each other's brains out. Killing two birds with one stone, eh? No. Killing two birds without throwing any stones. <laughs> Steve, now that ain't funny. Cut it out. What's the matter with you? I didn't do anything. Lock, lock tight. Now get out the way, I'll show you how to open that door. Come on, move out the way, I'll show you how to do it. Good gracious. <laughs> he showed us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you really fix things. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. I guess I don't even know my own strength. <laughs> Say, you know that's pretty smart of you sending me ahead to spy them thugs out, you know? Well, I know but that gummit to kill me with work. I'm getting dishwashers, hand, housemaid, needs. I notice you're eating pretty well. Kind of business-like looking outfit you got there, Steve. Yeah, belong to my brother Jimmy. We got here too late to help him. But not too late to bring in Howard. Oh, I don't think he's a man who gives able, Bob. Not from what your brother had to say, Steve. Did he mention any name? Well, he wasn't for sure then. Before I had a chance to talk to him again, they shot him in the back. Did he say anything to anyone before he went? Well, I don't think so. They took him to Doc Weston's office, and when I got there, he was dead. Well, what are you doing that for? Jimmy never had a chance to finish what he started. But his gun will. You ought to see my 
blue-eyed Sally. She lives away down on Shinbone Alley. The number on the gate, the number on the door, and the next house over is the grocery store. Stay all night, stay a little longer, dance all night, dance a little longer, pull off the coat, throw it in the corner, don't see why you don't stay a little longer. Singing to my love and slop bucket fell from the window up above. Mule in the grass, I'm eating ice cream. Mule got sick and laid him on the beam. Stay all night, stay a little longer. Dance all night, dance a little longer. Pull off your coat, throw it in the corner. Don't see why you don't stay a little longer. the prettiest thing. I hardly recognize him. First time I've ever seen him clean up that serious. Summer around, Tommy, or I'll do some real cleaning up. <laughs> that homesteaders meeting ought to be awful interesting. Sure, Miss Harkin's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Come around and fight like a man, you sneak. Come it. Cannonball, I thought I told you not to come here. Well, I know, but this is important. Blaze's men are going to bust up the homesteaders' meeting at the preacher's house. This sounds interesting. You boys relax. You're not going anyplace. I can handle this better alone. We've got to make our decision right now. We're not to be driven from our homes. We've got to stop acting like frightened children and fight back. My dad wasn't afraid. He fought back. I warn you, it'll be a hard fight, but we'll not stand alone. With the help of the Durango Kid, we'll win. How do we know we can depend on the Durango Kid? Bring it up, Southbusters. Meetings ain't allowed. Get going. Yeah, start moving. Remain where you are, my friends. This is my home, and it's up to me to say who's welcome here. That's so? Speaking of welcomes, you've overstayed yours here in this valley. You're getting out. You tried that bluff before, and it didn't work. I'm not bluffing this time, preacher. My next shot won't miss. Now you travel or get lugged out, toes up. Hello, Durango. Somehow I knew you wouldn't fail us. Thank you, ma'am. I'd appreciate it if you'd step inside a minute. A few minutes ago, you were asking me if we could depend upon the Durango kid. Have you had your answer? I'll say we have. Mister, that's the kind of action we've all been praying to see. You bet your life. Now we've got a fighting chance. We're ready to back your play, hide, hair, and talent. That's the kind of talk, if followed by action, will make this part of the country a decent place to live in. You just give us the orders, Durango. Just tell us what you want done. We'll do it. Suppose you start by turning those three over to the marshal. Marshal? Why, we haven't any marshal. Reverend, I'm afraid you're not up on the latest news. What about Blaze? You know there's going to be lead flying when we hit town, don't you? Then we've got to face it. If we back down, we can't expect the Durango kid to help us. Vicky's right. It's now or never to make our stand. Hello there, Reverend. Hello, Doc. Been out on a little sinner 
wound up, I see. That's right. With the help of the Durango kid. So you've decided to stop turning the other cheek and strike back, huh? That's the ticket. To start with, we're pulling the fangs out of these three rattlers. You'll sing a different tune when Blaze hears about this. Think I'll tell him. <laughs> I've been waiting for a long time for a chance to laugh in his face. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Doc. Hello. Have a drink. No, thanks. But you're going to need one. Spill it. <laughs> I just saw three of your plug uglies on their way to the hooska. What's that? Well, you're crazy. Go and see for yourself. <laughs> Cannonball, it looks as if the high and mighty blaze is heading for a fall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Howdy, Reverend. We're looking for the new marshal. Sure, Reverend. Hey, marshal! There is one, isn't there? Sure. He must be having his siesta. This is the only way to wake him up. What's all this noise? Oh, company. Miss Harding, Reverend. You? You're the marshal? Well, that's what the badge says. But you refuse when we asked you. What made you change your mind? Well, miss, maybe I kind of figured that women weren't the only ones who had a right to change their mind. Our customers for the jail, huh? They tried to break up a meeting at my house. Good work for bringing them in. How do you, Marshal? How do you like working for Blaze? I thought there was something funny about your being here. So you're working for Blaze Howard? No, I'm working for $2,000. $2,000? That's what he said he'd pay me to bring in the Durango Kid. The Durango Kid? Yeah. You've got to admit that's nothing to sneeze at. That's about as close as you'll come to collecting it, to sneeze at it. The Durango's our friend. He helped us get those men. Well, I didn't believe it when Doc told me. Someone must be having a little joke. It's right? no joke. These men have got to face the circuit judge when he gets here. Who are you kidding? That won't be for a month. Then turn him loose, Marshal. You can't do that, Steve. These men have committed every crime under the sun. They've got to stand trial. It's our one chance to get rid of them once and for all. Reverend's right. The three bad little boys would be kind of irregular for me to turn them loose. According to the laws of this territory, you've got to turn them loose on bail. That's right. How much? One thousand dollars. A thousand dollars? Yeah, a piece. A piece? Well, does the law say anything about the amount of bail? You have no right to admit cold-blooded murderers to bail. I'm only following the law, ma'am. The Durango kid! Well, let's get him! He almost killed me. He came riding in like the wind, and next minute it was gone. I'm telling you, it was terrible. If you don't mind, we'd just as soon stay here. Well, I mind, so on your way. We like it here, don't we, fellas? Sure. Yeah, sure. sure. According to the law, when you're bailed out, you get out. Vamos! What's the matter with you fellas? Have you gone crazy? yourself, freeing those killers to go out and rob and murder some more. Perhaps I had a purpose, miss. Marshal, I don't understand you. First you risk your life to help Marty Foster, and now you side in with the very men who took his father from him. I realize it needs some explaining. Reverend, if you were out to bag a rattler, wouldn't you pass up three skunks if you thought they'd lead you to that rattler? Yes, I think I would. Then things should be much clearer to you. They are. Good day, Marshal. Good hunting. Thank you. Say, what did he mean by that? Something tells me the marshal has more in common with the Durango kid than we suspect. Hey, Steve! How did you? Perfect cannonball. Perfect.
That's it. Good night, Johnny. Good night, boss. When you finish, Cannonball, I'll lock up. Yes, sir. You all heard what the boss said, didn't you? Come on, get going. Ain't you got no homes? Keep your shirt on. We want to finish this game. Leave it open, Blaze. The Durango Kid. What do you want? I'm collecting some of that money you stole from the homesteaders. Especially Marty Forster's father. You got it all wrong. The homesteaders are my friends. I even loan them money on their notes. Yeah, and then you plug ugly, stick it away from them. So you can move in on their land. Nice little setup. How about listening to my side of this? I'm not interested in your side. Only what's in your safe. Start shelling out. You just said you like my setup. How about joining up with me? Why well, split with you when I can grab it all? Get busy. Hurry it up. Here it is. What's the idea of turning up my clean floor? Get out of the way. Don't make any more clumsy moves. Okay. Get the Durango kid. He just robbed me. He's gone. I wonder which way he went. Well, how should I know? Come on.
<laughs> when did you take up high diving? <laughs> Well, well, it's sure beginning to look like something, Reverend. Yes, thanks to the help of my very good friends, I'll soon have a church. Well, while we're handing out thanks, let's don't forget the Durango kid. Well, without the money he got back for us, well, we couldn't have bought this place. That's right. But you ain't seen nothing yet, Doc. Wait till we round up our cattle and sell them. We're figuring on really fixing this place up. You folks have done enough already, Jed. That's nothing to what you've done. You made our fight your fight. But you got the Durango kid to help. That's the spirit. Help one another. You can count on me for a contribution, Jed. Thanks, Doc. I'm glad to do it. Where are you selling your beef, Jed? Right here. So? There's a big cattle bar coming down from Wichita next week. Fine. Keep up the good work. Goodbye, Doc. Goodbye. Now hop to it and make a good job of it this time. What's coming off here? I'm sending the boys over to stop work on the church. Forget about that small stuff. We've got something important to think about. What's on your mind, Chief? It's time we got wise to ourselves. You've broken up meetings before they've had others. That Sky Pilot is a good organizer and has plenty of courage. Besides, you haven't caught the Durango kid. He's causing us more damage every day. He's a hard nut to crack. That's what they'll all be if we let him go much further. I've got a big investment here, and I'm not going to let him get away from me. What do you want us to do? Stop them. We're good. Break them so they'll never come back. I want their land, and I don't care how I get it. They're planning a big roundup next week. If they make it, we're through. They won't. Don't worry. <laughs> Looks like clear sailing. We'll stampede him out of there. talking about when he warned us to be on guard. He always knows just where they're going to hit. right out that way and draw them off.
boss, it was the Durango Kid. Blaze Howard. The noose is beginning to tighten. Signed the Durango Kid. He broke up our raid and we lost another man. I wonder how he finds out every move we make. I don't know. That guy just ain't human. I'm getting out. Welching, eh? I'm staying alive and I want what's coming to me. There's only one way we pay off fake bad men like you. You've got a lot of nerve calling me a faker. You was kicked out of the army for passing yourself off as a sawbones. Same as you're doing here. And what's more, maybe the marshal's office at the county seat would like to know who finished off all them lawmen that's buried in Boot Hill. Duke, you always did talk too much. What's the trouble, Cannonball? What happened? It was the Durango kid. We were playing a 300 game of money. He suddenly appeared and shot Duke. This was all the warning he gave, Marshal. Blaze Howard, the noose is beginning to tighten. What do you mean by that? How should I know? That's for you to find out. He's an outlaw and I hired you to bring him in. That's right. Now that I've got something on the Durango, I certainly will have to bring him in. Well, I guess Duke's now in your hands, Doc. I'll take care of him. I advise you men to be careful. We never can tell who'll be next. some hot copy? No, not yet. I guess a dead marshal would make better copy than a live one. You must have given the last one plenty of space. Almost the whole front page. Mind if I have a look at it? Sure. There it is. Marshal James Ransom killed by unknown assailant. Doc Weston made a heroic but unsuccessful attempt to save his life. But victim was beyond aid when taken to his office. Anders, I suppose like any good newspaper man, you always get things right. I try to. You couldn't have made a mistake in this case. Mistake? Yes, about the marshal being beyond all aid when he was taken to Doc Weston's office. I've been trying to get something off my mind for a long time. But now with the Durango kid on the job, I reckon a fellow can talk and still stand a chance of living. I think you can depend on that. I was told what to put in that write-up. Who told you? Blaze Howard. Then the truth is, Marshal Ranson had a good chance of living when he was taken to the doctor's office. Certainly. 
A shoulder wound never killed anybody. Thanks, Anders. Thanks very much. I should have spoken before, but you know, self-preservation is the first law of nature. Sure, I understand. I'll see you again. Doc, you were right about the Durango kid. He's ten times more dangerous than the preacher and the homesteaders put together. Well, how are you going to catch up with a guy that's always a mile and a half ahead of you? Well, he isn't a mind reader. Someone's tipping him off. I gotta clean up, boss. You better come back a little bit later, Cannonball. I've got to take care of Blaze now. Oh, sure, Doc, sure. Say, boss, I hope it ain't nothing trivial. You were right, Blaze. The Durango kid is being tipped off by Cannonball. I'll take care of that. Wait. I have a better use for him. He's going to help us capture the Durango kid. Blaze, I think I know how to get rid of the Durango kid and the preacher. How, oh, Doc? That parson is the idol of every homesteader. If he should be murdered and the Durango kid blamed for it, Durango's life wouldn't be worth a plug nickel in this valley. Every sodbuster would be out gunning for him. You've hit it, Doc. We're starting for the preacher's place right now. <laughs> He's making for the Durango kid as fast as he can. We'll be ready for him this time. Now listen, Lenny. Durango. You walked right into the trap, Durango. So you're showing your true colors at last, eh, Doc? The same as you're going to do right now. Take off that mask. The Marshal. Yeah, kind of silly, wasn't it, Blaze? You hiring me to chase myself. Now, you've played your last trick. That's so. You can bank on it. When the Reverend shows up, he's going to stop a bullet. Then I'm going to kill the Durango kid for murdering him. Very good. You're wasting your time practicing medicine, Doc. I'll bet you planted more men in Boot Hill with that little pea shooter than with a surgeon's knife. Especially marshals who die in your office from shoulder wounds. So, you figured that out? Pretty low stuff, finishing off a wounded man. Too bad you're not going to be able to do anything about it. Here comes the preacher now. Where is he? You've been seeing things. Oh, I tell you, I just saw him. I don't get it. Turn around and you will.
through here, Doc. I'm leaving empty-handed after all of our plans. Maybe we won't have to leave empty-handed. That's the cattle buyer. This is our chance to break the homesteaders and save ourselves. Thank you. I guess you'll be able to carry on. Yes, thanks for the help from you and your boys. If you should meet the Durango kid, don't forget to thank him. You just consider that as good as done, Vicky. All right, boys, let's be on our way. Hey, wait for me! <laughs> <laughs> oh. 